Welcome back to Grade 7 Math. This is lesson number 9.3, Circle Graphs. A popular type of graph that is easy to read is a circle graph. A circle graph looks like, you guessed it, a circle. A circle graph is broken up into sections which represent the percentages of a total amount. And since we are dealing with percentages, the sections of a circle graph must add up to, that's right, 100%. The next time we have math in the lab, you will learn how to create circle graphs with Microsoft Excel. So, some of our next mathletics class time will actually be devoted to working with circle graphs. And then you'll get some time uh, to work on mathletics. But for today, today's lesson will focus on reading circle graphs and making important observations and conclusions. <clears throat> Take a look at this circle graph. Okay, we've got clearly defined title, favorite pizza toppings, and we have a legend here which tells us what each color represents. So just looking at the circle graph, question number one, what is the most popular pizza topping? Well, clearly it's pepperoni with 50%. And question two, what is the third most popular pizza topping? Well, 25% have fallen second place. So that means that 15% uh, sausage is the third most popular pizza topping. Okay, here's something for us to consider. What's wrong with these circle graphs? Um, taking a look at this first circle graph, I think a big problem is that there's no title. Uh, we have no idea what each section represents. We could guess that this is a survey uh, regarding students' favorite colors, but we can't tell that for sure. Also, just looking at this, um, it almost looks as though uh, the orange and the green sections have been uh, drawn in equal proportion, uh, which isn't right because 15% is smaller than 20. So visually, this green section should look uh, somewhat smaller than the orange. <clears throat> Over here, uh, there's no problem with the title, and we have a clearly defined legend, but take a look at this, folks. I'm pretty sure that 40% is bigger than 20%. Uh, so the question is, why is this section so much bigger uh, than this section here? Um, another mistake, we've got two 20%. Uh, so really, both 20% sections should be the same size, um, meaning that, again, 40%. Uh, should take up much more space. We can use the percentages shown on a circle graph to calculate the amount that each section represents. Let's work on a couple of examples. So here is a circle graph showing Harry's monthly budget, and he has $200 to spend each month. And he has several uh, commitments to make with that $200. And our challenge is to calculate the amount of money Harry spends on housing, transportation, and savings. Okay, let's, let's look at the solutions on the next slide. And this is where... Uh, one of the concepts that we learned in our previous unit on percents is really going to help us here. 
Harry's monthly budget, again, is $200. So, in order to calculate the amount he spends on housing, I'm going to take 35% and multiply that by 200. And, of course, we must first change 35% into decimal 3.5. Multiply that by 200, and that gives us a total of $70. Okay, just pause the video for 30 to 60 seconds and try calculating how much he spends on transportation. Once you've worked out an answer, um, hit the play button. Okay, so hopefully you tried this on your own. And we're going to use a similar method, 15% times $200. Change that to a decimal and multiply. And that will give us $30. Okay, do the same thing again. Pause the video and try calculating the amount spent on savings. Okay, so let's check our answer, and we should end up with $20. Okay, I'm going to leave this for you to try at home, and then we're going to discuss this in tomorrow's class. I want you to try to answer these three questions that are based on this circle graph. Okay, question A. What food group is Josephine eating the most? Question B. If Josephine eats a total of 1,000 grams per day, how much of it is meat and beans? And question C. How much of the 1,000 grams of food is vegetables? And the biggest hint I'll give you is to uh, go back to the previous two slides uh, and just review the method that was used there to calculate different amounts and try using that method to answer questions B and C. And again, we'll take this up in class tomorrow, but for now you can hit pause while you consider your answers to these questions. Okay, great. So after we go over that last slide in class tomorrow, you should be ready for some independent practice. But until tomorrow, this concludes today's video.